The only problem though, is that sometimes people are a little bit oversensitive. So you've got people getting in trouble for misspeaking just as much as somebody who's being actually racist. And I feel like we need to be able to differentiate. I think we need a scale. <laughs> a scale of eight. Or a color chart. <laughs> yeah, no, imagine we had it. Like, you know, every time someone says something stupid on Twitter or something like that, we just look at the card. One out of ten is a little kid who's overheard something, they don't know what they're saying, they repeat it. Ten out of ten, actual racist, member of the KKK. Ten! I think we need to try. Yeah, let's try it. So last year, there were three cases where a white celebrity said the N-word. Now, all three of them got in just as much trouble. People were yelling at them, people were screaming at them, they got in just as much trouble, but I don't think the cases are the same. So I'm gonna go through them one by one, and you, as a crowd, can decide where they belong from one to 10. Now don't worry, there'll be jokes in the middle. <laughs> I can see some people think, oh, I didn't expect a quiz. <laughs> and don't worry, there's no, it's not a trick, there's no right answer. It's just like, it's like a survey. I'm just curious, because I do this in different cities and different people have different ideas of what's acceptable. I'm just curious. So the first case was Katie Price. Jordan, are you all aware of who Jordan is? You all know Katie Price, okay. Okay, you don't need to engage with that. <laughs> but essentially, Katie Price is a, a page three model, I guess a glam model, and she's white, and her child is mixed race. And she was on a morning show talking about her son being bullied, and she essentially said that, I don't like it, it's not right that people are messaging my son and calling him a nigger. And they got very angry, they said, oh, you can't say that word, Katie Price. How dare you say that, Katie? You can't say that word, Katie Price, you're white. How dare you say that word the next day? On social media, people were even angrier. They're like, oh my God, Katie Price! You've crossed the line for the last time. I used to be a fan, but no more! No more, I'm never gonna masturbate looking at your tits again! <laughs> people were angry. Calling all kinds of horrible words. And it's interesting, because look, I'm not saying I, I'm a fa I, I, I like the fact she said it, but at the same time, when I boiled it down, I was like, she was actually saying, don't call a little kid this. I mean, where do you put that from one to 10? One. one. one? Yell, yell, no wrong answers. One. One? Oh, well, one, we all seem to agree, one. I agree, I think people overreacted. I think people are starting to treat nigger like it's Voldemort. Like it's a magic word that should not be said. Or like it's Candyman. Like if you're in a house alone and you look at a mirror and you say, nigger, nigger, nigger. <laughs> Suddenly a white American policeman appears. <laughs> Yeah, I'm terrified of those guys. I, I, <laughs> After Britain's Got Talent, a lot of people said, move to America, it'll be great for your career. I was like, I, I think I'll stay in England. <laughs> <laughs> the second one. Second one was Bill Maher. Are you aware of Bill Maher? Bill Maher is an American comedian. Clap your hands if you know Bill Maher. Okay, not a lot of you. All you need to know is a white comedian. He's like a political comedian in America. Very clever, does political stuff. He's a sort of comedian who if he was in the UK, he'd be on something like, have I got news for you? But he's white. And he was arguing with someone and he improvised a joke. Essentially the person was saying, you know, you're overprivileged. You've never worked a day in your life. We need to get you working in the fields. And he said, not me, I'm a house nigger. Ha! It was pretty quick with it. He thought of it on the spot, it just came out, bam! He just forgot he was white. <laughs> forgot he was white. Instead of getting a laugh, the whole crowd just went, Phew. And I understand how that can happen. I forget I'm black all the time. Just the other day, I was in an airport. 
Manchester airport, and I walked right past one of those random security checks, and I was like, oh, sorry, I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot I'm black, open the bag. Open the bag. <laughs> but he was trying to be funny. Now this happens a lot, where do you put it? Where do you put it where a comedian is trying to be funny and instead they offend people massively? And it doesn't just happen with race. I mean like it's sort of happening right now with uh, Samantha Bee, uh, offended a lot of people. She, she, she called Melania Trump the C word, right? But in a joke, uh, it's happened with uh, James Corden. Yes, James Corden, very funny guy, but last year he tried to do some jokes about Weinstein and the Me Too movement, he offended a lot of people. Where do you put it, where a comedian's trying to be funny, but instead of getting laughs, they get some people very angry. Where do you put that from one to 10? No wrong answers. Where do you think, where do you put? One, five. Oh, you, you're, you're pretty, it's interesting. You, there's a lot of variety when it comes to that because I think we all have a different idea of what we think is acceptable and what's not acceptable when it comes to jokes. It makes it hard sometimes for comedians and producers. There was a joke I was not allowed to do on television. It was crazy. So let me just tell you the, the situation. So I wanted to go onto a television show. This wasn't British Gone there was another television show. I went out to do my audition and there were two producers with little clipboards. And so I told them what I thought was my best joke at the time. And this was a joke based on truth about the day I was reading an article in the newspaper about the Paralympics, the disabled Olympics. I turned the page and there was an article about paratroopers. I was like, is that the disabled army? I have a mental image now of a general coming out and saying, Wheelchairs, roll out! <laughs> Blind snipers, take aim! <laughs> Amputees, march! <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> Not quite a few of you are laughing. And interestingly, the producers of that show were laughing their asses off! And one of them was like, oh my God, that's so funny, that's so funny. You can't do it. <laughs> and I was like, why can't I do it? Don't make that joke more mean-spirited than it is. It's not like I'm bullying anyone. I've just noticed para is in both of these words and I've taken it to an absurd conclusion. And then he said to me, look, 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 I'm not offended, but other people might be. And th this puzzles me. Like, if I offend any of you, by all means, talk to me about it, because I'll either apologize or explain myself, because that's not what I'm trying to do. If I hurt your feelings, I'll own it. But what I don't understand is when people get offended on somebody else's behalf. <laughs> They're like outsourcing <laughs> the offendedness to a call center somewhere. <laughs> but they explain further. They say, look, look, look. We would have let you do the joke a few years ago, but in the current climate, we're careful ever since what happened with Frankie Boyle. Now, if you're not aware of this, Frankie Boyle is a Scottish comedian, very clever comedian. A few years ago, he did a joke, disability joke, got him in trouble. Now, I'm not defending the joke. I'm not analyzing the joke. Maybe it was as silly as mine. Maybe it was more mean-spirited. Maybe it was less mean-spirited. But what happened next is what I thought was odd. So he did this joke on television. For weeks afterwards, people were talking about it. On the radio, people were like, how dare this man make these jokes about disabilities? This is disgusting. In the newspaper, people were like, this is not what we want on our television screens. How dare this man make jokes about disabilities? This is disgusting. Everybody was saying, how dare he make it? He's crossed the line, this is disgusting. How dare he make these jokes about disabilities? For three weeks, people were talking about this. Then last year, the British government cut the disability benefit. No fucker talking. <laughs> politicians are clever. They cut the disability benefit, but to make it better for public relations purposes, they changed the name. It's no longer called the disability benefit. Too offensive. 
They changed the name to the Personal Independence Payment. More politically correct, half as much money. <laughs> I guarantee you disabled people would rather you double the money called the Hop, Skip and Jump Fund. <laughs> We don't care what you call it, give us the money! Because I think sometimes in the UK you could get obsessed with cosmetic issues and ignore the real issues, fascinating. In fact, a lot of your rules don't make sense. I remember being on the Mersey Rail, traveling to Crosby. I was tired. I put my feet up. I did not know you cannot put your feet up on the Mersey Rail. They find me. Do any of you know the fine? If they catch you with your feet up on the Mersey Rail, it's 80 quid! 80 quid! Oh my God! I checked. Do you know what the fine is for public indecency? 50 quid. You are better off wanking on the train. and putting your feet up. <laughs> but you kind of expect comedians to say the wrong thing, right? Comedians like Bill Maher, myself, you expect comedians to cross the line, this is what we're trying to do. And you kind of expect Katie Price to say the wrong thing. You don't expect it from a member of the government, right? Because you would think if anyone knows the power and the influence of their words, it would be a member of the government. Because the third person who dropped the N-word last year, I didn't see it coming. It was Anne-Marie Morris, a Tory MP. Now, did any of you read about this? Did you listen to this? I always think it's amazing everybody doesn't know about this because she dropped the N-word not in a little back room or something, she dropped it in a speech! <laughs> Proudly! It was crazy, she was creative. It was a speech about Brexit. I know what you're thinking, how do we connect Brexit and the N-word? I don't know. <laughs> she used an idiom. An idiom is a figure of speech like, it's raining cats and dogs, or a fly in the ointment. She used an idiom from like the 1920s. She said, Brexit without a plan is a real nigger in the woodpile. <laughs> yes! Yes! She just dropped it into the speech. Left it bouncing there. And you just had other of our colleagues looking around like, hey, don't look at me. I didn't tell her to say it, hey. <laughs> and then later on, when people asked her, why did you say that? She said, oh, I didn't mean any offense. And I was like, what would you have said if she wanted to offend us? <laughs> and she did that routine, which everyone does, where, you know, she did that insincere Twitter apology. Disappeared for like two months, and then she came back, right? And now she's in government, and I get nervous every time she gives a speech. Because I'm like, has she got other idioms we've not heard yet? <laughs> Next week, she could be giving us speeches. Oh, Brexit's getting more and more complicated. It's a real gollywog in the glove compartment. <laughs> now, where do we put her from one to 10? Where do you put her from one to 10? No wrong answers, louder. 10, 10 9, 7. I agree. And the only reason I'm saying I feel like we need to to differentiate between these people is that if you lump them all together, you get to the point that getting outraged starts losing its power. Because people are getting outraged at everything. And then when you have somebody showing up and being actually racist, like Donald Trump. <laughs> like Donald Trump calling all Mexicans rapists. And we point out, hey, I think this guy's being a little bit uh, racist. They're like, oh no, you're just being politically correct. <laughs> like, I don't think that's what was going on. 